who has nuclear weapons in the Middle East and is threatening to use them. Coming up. Benjamin Netanyahu revealing what he really thinks about America. The world's top war crimes prosecutor tells us why he helped convict Israel for genocide. And Wikipedia becomes a battlefield as lobbies try to rewrite history. Kuala Lumpur War Crimes Commission on November 26 found Israel guilty of genocide against the Palestinians. The tribunal states consistent evidence it heard from eyewitnesses concluded since 1948 there have been repeated mass killings through air and naval strikes, forced expulsion from Israel of hundreds of thousands of Palestinian survivors, massacres of those who refused to leave, continued seizure of Palestinian lands for Jewish settlements. Some public roads in Israel itself are for Jews only. Non-white Jews are also officially discriminated. Blood banks refuse to accept blood from Ethiopian Jews. Use against Palestinian civilians of illegal white phosphorus, which the tribunal notes tears out the insides of human bodies. Land and sea blockades of Palestinian territory, leading to a state of, quote, siege and imprisonment of the entire nation. Denial of food and drinking water and the stealing of Palestinian water resources and hundreds of checkpoints on Palestinian lands that create, quote, impossible conditions of life. Some see the war crimes tribunal as highly controversial body and question its authority and legitimacy. We asked the Israel Foreign Ministry for a response. This was their summary. Distorting historical reality by calling Israel's actions crimes is an insult to intelligence. There is no siege on Gaza, but a naval blockade had been declared in accordance with international law. However, the Independent reports top Israeli officials are on the record admitting a premeditated intention. The goal is to send Gaza back to the Middle Ages. We need to flatten all of Gaza. The Americans didn't stop with Hiroshima. They hit Nagasaki, too. Unaware he's being filmed, Israel's prime minister reveals he wants to inflict, quote, unbearable pain on Arabs and claims he's manipulating America. The main thing is to hit the Arabs. So painful that it will be unbearable. The world will say, we're defending. America is something that can be very easily moved. Without urgent action, the UN's report finds Gaza will be, quote, unlivable by 2020. YNET News reports Israel repeatedly bombs Gaza's only power station. When treatment plants ran out of fuel last week, thousands of litres of raw sewage again ran in Gaza's streets. It's not floodwaters which this man is struggling to walk through, but human waste and sewage. Even our children, if they want to go to the schools or to the shops, we're forced to carry them. We've become sick and have trouble breathing, and a new skin disease is emerging because of this situation. The past year, says IDF Brigadier Michael Edelstein, was a great one. Retaliation rocket attacks from Gaza on settlements have stopped, he knows. Yet Israel's reciprocal pledge to help Gaza, writes The Economist, hasn't been kept. UN Special Rapporteur on Human Rights warns the world is slouching towards nothing less than a Palestinian Holocaust. Professor Richard Falk, thank you very much for joining us. Why is this behaviour actually genocidal? When you uh, uh, target a group, uh, uh, an ethnic group, and, and inflict this kind of punishment, upon them, you are, uh, in, in effect, uh, uh, nurturing a kind of criminal intention uh, that is genocidal. Was well, leading war crimes prosecutor helped establish the genocide tribunal, Professor Francis Boyle sent President Milosevic to The Hague. He is now working for the creation of The Hague International Criminal Tribunal for Israel. Professor Boyle, thanks so much for joining us. Israel has now threatened preemptive conventional and nuclear strikes on Tehran. What is its legal basis? Absolutely none. Uh, the rural court already decided that in the uh, legality of nuclear weapons uh, case that the uh, uh, threat stands on the same footing as the uh, actuality. A preventive uh, or a preemptive warfare was condemned by the Nuremberg Tribunal. But the bottom line, it's Israel uses its uh, 
nuclear weapons to uh, terrorize and intimidate uh, the uh, the surrounding states of the region. It has nothing to do with uh, with defense. The Guardian reports how close we've already come to all-out war. Prime Minister Netanyahu ordered a P-plus alert on Iran's energy facilities in 2010 that would make, quote, an Israeli military strike inevitable. The country's spy chief, Mayor Dagan, notes it was an illegal move without authorization of cabinet and that Netanyahu was, quote, trying to steal a war. It's not known what stopped Netanyahu's order being carried out, but it received extremely forceful opposition from two people who were informed. Army head Gabi Ashkenazi and Mayor Dagan, who called Netanyahu's plan, quote, the stupidest idea I have ever heard. Both have now left their posts. Israel's Institute for National Security Studies wargamed precisely the attack ordered by Netanyahu and found two outcomes possible. One, a contained reaction. The other, World War III. Top saxophonist, producer and author Gilad Atzmam renounced his Jewish religion and Israeli citizenship. The core of Jewish identity, he says, has become racism. Gilad joins us now. It's great to speak to you. Why do we keep getting these unprovoked apocalyptic crises? The more murderous the Israelis are, the more they are horrified that the Palestinians may as well be as murderous as, as they happen to be. And this is a vicious circle. Former U.S. intelligence estimate chairman Ray McGovern estimates four in five Americans don't know Israel might even have an atomic bomb, thanks to complete distortions by mainstream media, suggesting Iran is the nuclear power. Iran, uh, with their nuclear program, uh, ready to aim those missiles straight at, uh, straight at the country. According to both Jane's Defense Weekly and the Institute of Strategic Studies, Israel is estimated to have 200 to 300 nuclear warheads. All 16 U.S. intelligence agencies admit Iran's not even trying to build one. In an article entitled Middle East Pop Quiz, syndicated journalist Charlie Reese noticed simple facts you'd be sure referred to Iran if you relied on mainstream media when they actually applied to Israel. Fairness and accuracy in reporting notes, absent of any evidence against Iran, mainstream media are now resorting to astonishingly crude racist slurs they'd never dare print about Jews, currently being printed in all seriousness about the entire Persian peoples. The New York Times claims that Iran's a land where straight talk and virtue are not widely seen to overlap. Persians lie like a rug, smirks the Washington Post. Investigative journalist and New Yorker contributor John Schwartz says we shouldn't be surprised. He found throughout history when officials need the public support for unprovoked brutality against a weaker victim, they say there's just something fishy about the whole race. Ex-CIA chief Richard Helms claimed to Congress that unlike, quote, Asiatics and Eastern Europeans, Americans are raised to tell the truth. When India refused to join the US in war in Pakistan, President Nixon said it was because all Indians are just slippery, treacherous people. James Adair wrote, black slavery should remain in place as savage African nations are cunning and use various artifices and pretexts. And native Indians are, quote, naturally given to treachery. Israel's defense minister, Ehud Barak, says Palestinians don't suffer from the problem of telling lies that exists in Judeo-Christian culture. But the top anti-Iranian smear claimed in today's U.S. mainstream is bazaar trickery. CNN concludes the U.S.-Iran deal must be a trick in the spirit of the Persian bazaar. The New York Times solemnly concludes Obama must have been out-negotiated in the Persian nuclear bazaar. Fooling foreigners is an ancient Persian art form, insists the Washington Post. Even The Economist magazine, which usually supported U.S. bombing campaigns from Libya to Syria and Iraq, found it's gone a bit far. Have any of these people tried to negotiate with, say, Mitch McConnell? Somebody has got to put a stop to this whole Persian Bazaar rhetorical fixation. It's ridiculous. It's ethnically offensive. And its entire purpose is to serve as a smokescreen for disastrously violent policies backed by militarists in Israel and neoconservatives in America.
Wikipedia is a key battlefield in this war. The Telegraph reports Israel lobbies building, quote, armies of editors that rewrite the history books, such as this article on why Palestinians fled Israel. These leaked emails expose the lobby's plans, including infiltration of Wiki's administrators. Make relationships with Wikipedia editors and super editors, known as administrators. After we have built our army, we will go to war. Let's talk with Asia Times correspondent Pepe Escobar. It's great to see you. How to explain these coordinated campaigns denigrating an entire ethnic group? Obviously, they are being paid working for the Israeli lobby, paid by their agents in the US. And it's very easy to identify these people, especially in US mainstream media. You know, the usual columnists for Washington Post or usual people who write uh, op-ed pages for the Wall Street Journal, Fox News, it goes without saying. Yeah, could that deal show Israel's last sponsor, America, is getting fed up with its behavior? It's the first time that uh, an American administration is actually thinking first about U.S. national interests and not trying to do something that would be Israeli first. So this is also a, a real game changer in terms of U.S.-Israeli relations. When President Obama was caught with his mic switched on, agreeing he can't stand, quote, liar, Benjamin Netanyahu reports ABC News, there were already signs Israel's losing support from the U.S. The United States has said that they believe the settlements are not helpful and are illegitimate. America's public censure against Israel's occupation of the West Bank, notes NBC, breaks decades of official tacit approval. So Prime Minister Netanyahu's claim he can move the United States any direction he likes no longer seems quite as kosher. 